These are the videos I'm recording today. And this one says travel, dock, gear. Let's do it. What's up, y'all? My name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. Mainly, I shoot portraits and events and weddings and stuff like that. But what I want to talk to you about today is documentary filmmaking. Now, I don't have a lot of experience in this, so uh, to be honest, there's obviously much better channels. You can go visit, you know, Mark Bone at Art of Documentary or Luke Forsyth. He's got an awesome channel. There's there's lots of people making great documentaries, and I am certainly not saying that I am like up there with them in terms of what I'm doing. But right now I am working on a documentary with Christy Goss. She's an ultra runner and a kidney donor. We just finished filming a 200 mile road race that she completed and it was intense. It was crazy. Yeah, 200 miles sounds intense, sounds crazy because it was, it was nuts. And I was with her for four days in Ohio. We were running around rural Ohio and I was pacing her, which means I ran about 50 miles of that with her. I was crewing for her, which meant running back and forth between different stops with her husband and her son, and we were getting her food and, and you know, water and, and anything else she needed. And I was also filming the whole time. And it was a crazy experience. It was incredibly tiring and, and wild. But what I wanna talk about today is the gear that I used to accomplish that. Now, I had a whole different set of gear that I was using for all the sit down interviews, you know, like, different lighting, different mics, all that kind of stuff. But what I want to talk about today is what I took with me on the trip and what was useful and what I absolutely didn't use. Um, I, I brought a lot of gear with me, way less than I could have, but I could have brought even less than I did and totally gotten away with it. So I'll take you through what I used. I'm not going to talk about like specific recommendations for brands because I don't really give a fuck what you use as long as you have the gear you need. And this is what I found really helpful. Okay, so let's talk about the camera that I use. It's the Lumix S5-2X, which is the camera that I'm using to film this right now. Uh, it's a good camera. I think it is certainly passable for the stuff that I'm doing, and I think it would go really far away into any kind of dock production. Uh, the reason I like it is that it's got pretty good low light performance. Um, it's a full frame camera, and I usually shoot on crop sensor, and so sometimes it is nice to just have that little extra light, especially because we had Christy running all day and all night, and well, we didn't have a running. She chose to run all day and all night. And that just meant that having really good low light performance and a, and a, you know, a larger sensor just made that a little bit easier. And ergonomically, it's a great camera, like really comfortable to use. And I basically had it in my hand for four days straight and I enjoyed it the whole time. What's great about this camera is that it has incredible IBIS, which is awesome because everything I was doing was handheld. It's got good autofocus, never had an issue with that. Uh, they did release a, a firmware update for this camera like a few days before I left. So I updated it which is a scary move sometimes because you don't know if it's gonna break your camera, but a lot of people had this sort of beta version and didn't have any issues. So I just chose to trust it and hope for the best, <laughs> um, which is sketchy. Don't do that. Don't do what I did, but it worked out. Um, and the, the final thing is that it just like, it, it has a lot of different recording formats. It has a log profile as well as like a really nice flat profile. So the way that I actually recorded using this is that during the daytime, when I was dealing with like full sun, I was using the flat profile because the, dual native ISO on this camera for the log profile starts at 640 and then uh, the second ISO that's native to it is 4000. So no matter what, you're letting a lot of light in. The problem with that being that like in full sun, I just didn't have a strong enough ND filter to be able to cut down on the amount of light and everything was just going to be overexposed. So what I did is basically when I got into like darker situations or at nighttime, I shot in vlog and I was able to use that dual native ISO of 640 or 4000 and that worked for everything I needed it to. And then secondly, when I was shooting in like full light daytime, I just saw it in a flat profile. I could use ISO 100, stop down the aperture a little bit to like 5.6 or something like that. And it worked out well. That's the thing. So like, I'm not looking to make like a cinematic masterpiece out of this documentary. I'm looking to document things. So there's a few differences in how you would shoot. Like I'm not looking for that super, super shallow depth of field. I don't, I want context. I want people to see what's around Christy because she's running in this crazy, you know, conditions and place. And, and there's no reason for me to need like a 1.8 aperture unless it's for low light. And because this camera has that 4,000 ISO and it performs pretty well at that, I don't really have to worry about that too much. So that means that I could just focus on the camera settings that were right for exposure and not stress too much about that. I brought two lenses with me. I brought the Sigma 24 to 70 2.8 and I brought a 50 mil f 1.8. I actually didn't touch the 50 mil the entire time. Everything was shot on the 24 to 70 
and everything was handheld and it worked out nicely. Like I, it was the focal range I needed. Sometimes it would have been nice to be able to punch in a little bit more, but the reality is that it was all handheld. And so if I punched into like 200 millimeters, everything would look really shaky and shitty anyway. So it worked out well. I mean, the 24 to 70 is a standard lens. It's a beautiful lens. It's boring as hell. I don't like it, but it's fine. It works and it does what you need it to, especially in a scenario like this, where like you can get so caught up in gear and just completely miss shit when it comes to the story. And I just didn't want to do that. I wanted to have something that was simple that I knew I could just turn on and start recording and everything would be good. Other things I brought was an external battery. I had a 99 watt hour V-mount battery. I just basically used that to charge stuff. I didn't really like, you know, attach it because I wasn't using anything like a monitor or anything like that. Now a monitor would be good in certain situations. When it was really bright out, it would have been nice to have like a really bright, like 2000 nit monitor, but I just don't have one. The one I have is around a thousand nit and that would have been helpful, but it's just adding so much like stuff to my setup. And I really wanted to be super nimble because I knew that I was going to be like jumping in and out of my car, filming really quick, grabbing her water and food, uh, you know, like jumping in and running with her. Like I, I, there was just too much going on in this to be bogged down with things like a big V mount battery attached to my camera along with a like monitor and a handle and everything like that. And I, I brought all that stuff minus the monitor, but just ended up choosing not to use it and just going very, very simple. Other things, you know, I brought a variable ND filter and some other filters just in case I needed it. The variable ND was basically on the camera the entire time because it's just so much easier to adjust your exposure on the fly with a VND and just kind of like shift it gently. What I would say is make sure that whatever one you get has like a little handle to it so that you can ride that more easily. I found that really helpful. I think you would too. As for audio, now in certain scenarios when you're doing a travel documentary, you would probably mic your talent, you know, right? You would take a, you know, whether it's like a lab mic and put it on them or even one of the like Rode wireless go mics and attach it to them. Generally speaking, you would mic the person that you are kind of focusing on and maybe you would have a shotgun mic and you'd run two audio inputs or something like that. I couldn't really mic up somebody who's running all the time. It just isn't possible for what we were doing. So everything was with the shotgun mic. It was with the mic I'm using now, which is the Comica VM30. It's a cool shotgun mic because it's also wireless. So right now it's in its wireless setup. It worked well. The one thing I will say is that I did have a little bit of trouble with it where at one point it just stopped working. I didn't know why. And that's when I realized that it wasn't pulling power from the camera. I, I went through the settings. I couldn't in that moment figure out how to get it to draw power from the camera and I thought it was doing it the whole time and I guess it just wasn't. Now I, that's probably a setting that I just messed up on, but it was just something that I wish I had some more time to sort of troubleshoot. And so what I ended up having to do was just run like my camera audio for a minute. Um, and then I started charging it. And while I was doing that, I did bring a second uh, microphone, uh, or at least I thought I did. Turns out I left it at home, so that's cool. Always have a backup audio option. <laughs> Thankfully I did. Uh, I had the Rode wireless uh, go little, uh, you know, lapel adapter thing. So I threw one of those on and it wasn't the best option, but it got me by for a couple of clips while this charged. And that didn't really take too long because it charges pretty quick. And uh, yeah, that was it for my audio solutions. Um, it was crazy windy a couple of the days we were there, which is frustrating. And that's just something I had to deal with. So um, thankfully when, when, you're, when you're filming a doc, like yes, you wanna be able to hear everything, but you also, the environment, for what we were shooting, the environment was important. The fact that it was crazy windy plays into the reality of how difficult it was for her to do this run. So being able to hear some wind and, and like having a hard time hearing her sometimes is actually kind of compelling. Now that's lucky for this style of documentary, but it doesn't mean that'll always go the way. So just think about what you wanna bring when it comes to audio gear and just make sure you have a backup. Last few things, just have a good bag that you like, something that's comfortable. I was using the Peak Design uh, 10 liter, yeah, 10 liter sling. Uh, I just had that for everything. It fit everything I needed for my like daily use. And then in the car, I had all my other gear because I was driving around. Uh, you could use a backpack. I had the Wandered Provoke 21 liter. It's fine. I, man, I, the more I use different like bags and backpacks and stuff, the more I realize why photographers are constantly changing their backpack because it's so annoying and none of them are perfect. Uh, but this one's fine for now and I can't wait to get a different one and I wish I didn't buy it. So that's my take. I think the 21 liter is just too small. Um, I think the area that the camera cube goes in is too small. 
A 31 liter might be more beneficial, I don't know, but I would probably just look at a different system entirely. Personally, I am gonna be selling that, so hey, if you want it, let me know. I made it sound pretty good, huh? Uh, other than that, things like a tripod, uh, I brought one with me. I used it to film a YouTube section, but that's about it. Um, cleaner, uh, bring like a, a, a little cleaning kit for your camera and the sensor and the, you know, the lenses and stuff like that. Cause it is going to get dirty when you're going on like any kind of travel shoot, you are going to have to deal with that. And so that was something that I was trying to make sure I did and just really easy to have with me. Lots of external batteries, uh, memory, all that kind of stuff, ways to back up your footage. That's super important. If you're not going to be in a place where you can reliably like back up to the cloud, bring two different SD, SSD, bring two different external hard drives and back up to both. So even though they can't be in a different place entirely, maybe like one in your car in, in the glove box and one in, uh, you know, in your like bag or something like that, just keep them separate. So if you lose one, you don't lose both and try and back up to two different things and then immediately try and back up to the cloud or to whatever your solution at home is the second you get home. Another thing I brought was a light. Uh, I ended up bringing the same light that I'm using right now, which is the Zhiyun uh, what's it called? The Cinepeer CX100 light, 100 watt light. It is totally rechargeable and that's great. Um, I actually didn't end up really using it. I did bring one other small little light. I'll, I can show you that just kind of clips onto my camera and it's it's fine. I have it here somewhere. One sec. So this is the other light that I brought. It's, it's by Ilanzi. It's just like a little, little light thing. Um, you can just you know, attach it to your camera and it can just give you a little bit of extra light. It's not the most like flattering or anything like that, but it's also magnetic. So you can pop it up against something. And it's a nice thing to have at night when you just need a little bit more light. Didn't really end up using it much, but um, it is a helpful thing to have. So that's something else I would bring. Beyond that, just bring comfortable clothing and things that you feel are good. Bring stuff for different weather. Like I wore a parka and a rain jacket and shorts and a t-shirt all within 36 hours because it's April and you never know what you're going to get. So just bring extra stuff if you can. If you're lucky enough to do what I did, which was drive, I could just, I literally just took a laundry hamper, filled it with all my clothing and put it in the car and pulled what I needed. You might have to be more judicious if you're actually traveling, like flying or something like that. But for this, that worked out. So that's it. That's the stuff I brought. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff I brought that I didn't even touch, but in a different type of documentary, you might. So, you know, if you are doing like a mix of photography as well, maybe you want to bring a flash, maybe you want to bring a couple other lenses, you know, uh, just looking at my gear laid out here, like I had a top handle. I did have a cage on this the whole time, um, but I never really used it for anything. It was just nice to have on it to be a little sturdier. Um, I had a little gimbal. I never ended up using it because I just didn't want that style of footage. And I think that actually is really important. So go into whatever you're doing with an intention of how you want it to look and then bring the gear to get the look. I brought the gear to get a couple different looks that I ended up knowing I wouldn't want and they just sat in my car. I had that luxury because it was in a car but it was also more stuff to potentially get stolen, to potentially break. Lots of reasons why having more gear is not necessarily better. So that's my basic setup for the travel doc. Um, we are going to be premiering this in uh, some local areas and then eventually it'll make its way onto YouTube probably in about six months because we wanna give it some time for the edit and we have some more sort of like exit interview kind of situation to, to, to film and then we'll be showing it at like local you know breweries and, and running stores and all this different stuff and yeah. Look forward to you being able to see it at some point though. So thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you. Let me know what kind of stuff you bring with you when you're doing a documentary. Go follow people like Luke Forsyth and Mark Bone. They're both Canadian dudes here that make incredible content. Way, 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 way better than I do. And I think you should uh, give them a follow. You probably know them already because if you typed in documentary on YouTube, you saw them first because that's how SEO works. Bye.